welcome to Rhythm, a podcast on being in balance through conversations with the Swami. Namaste Rhythm listeners and Namaste Swamiji, how are you? Namaste Sunil, I'm very good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Swamiji, Today I thought we could start by recapping for our listeners the four yogas. We've talked about the three, we've talked about three yogas in a lot of detail already, which is uh, on meditation, which is called Raj Yoga. We've talked about Karma Yoga and we've, in our last episode, we talked about Gyan Yoga. So, so today, before we go into the details of the fourth yoga, shall we just do a quick recap for them? Yes, uh, Sunil, thank you for that. So, when great teachers come, they work out for us in a very systematic way the path that we can follow. They give a lot of theory, a lot of teachings in there, but in a very clear way, they will prescribe exactly what we need to do. And so, for Ramakrishna Mission, when Swami Vivekananda founded the mission, he tried to, in a very beautiful way, encapsulate the ideal of the organization, what the organization stands for and that is represented in the logo of the Ramakrishna mission. We are all familiar with that and you see there are four aspects of it, actually five. We have the rising sun <clears throat> which is the symbol of knowledge. When the sun rises the darkness disappears and the lotus is represented of bhakti, representing bhakti and the blooming and opening of the emotional dimension, the heart. The water incessantly in waves represents karma yoga always we are action physically and mentally and the encircling serpent represents the awakening of the kundalini the raj yoga in the center is the swan the swan represents the supreme being the atman a person who has realized the self is called paramhamsa hamsa is the swan the supreme swan so it represents the supreme being or one who has realized that when he gives some milk to a swan it will take the essence of the milk and leave the water part behind. So, a person who has been able to separate the essence of this universe, which is the pure consciousness, from all the names and forms, which is constantly changing, has been able to separate the unchanging from the changing. He is given that title as a, as a in recognition of that realization. So, these four yogas, jnana, bhakti, karma, dhyana, raja yoga, are not watertight separate compartments. They all like we are everything integrated together. Mm -hmm. When we study or describe something, just like you know, you look at the biology textbook here about the digestive, different chapters are on different things. And doctors become specialized in different type of fields. But the human beings are total interconnected. One is connected to the other. All of them are integrated. So it's very important that while we might study each one separately, that we have to go through that process of synthesizing, integrating. Them. Then it becomes holistic and supporting each other and beautiful blending. Otherwise, it will be like one side you go off the track. The four wheels should in the car should all be in harmony. Otherwise, you know, it will make the vehicle go off the, off the track. So, these four yogas have to be understood in that. The reason why these four yogas are prescribed because... This human being, every human being has been born with these four faculties. Mm. Okay, we have got the intellect through which we reason, jnana. We have the heart through which we feel emotions. That is, uh, bhakti part will come there. We are, have got hands and feet, karmendriyas by which we are engaging ourselves in, in speech. Uh, so these are action karma. And now and then we all want to shut all this down and repose and withdraw into ourselves and feel that calmness that is the path of meditation. So we are always, all of us in one way or the other in our day-to-day -day engagements and duties and responsibilities are using these faculties. Yes. So Swamiji, I suppose the question now is the four pathways, are they leading to something? Like are they, what is the... So they're called yogas. Yeah. All of them have got a bhakti, yoga, jnana, yoga. So yoga means to join. The two meanings are there of yoga mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the scriptures. One means it, it comes from the Sanskrit word yukta, join. It means you, the jivatma, the, the embodied self, which we experience ourselves as to be, 
uh, has somehow lost its connection with the Paramatma. The wave doesn't know that there's an ocean behind it type of thing. Mm-hmm. So yoga means to connect. And in bhakti, the devotee connects himself to the supreme being. Uh, in jnana, the jivatma says, I'm not this body-mind complex, I'm the supreme being. In all of these methods, we are trying to reintegrate ourselves to our own higher self. Right. Okay. This human being that we conceive and experience ourselves is only the tip of the iceberg. There's a bigger something under the water, invisible, that is far superior to what we are experiencing ourselves. And there, in, in that dimension of our being, we are perfect, we are pure, we are eternal, immortal. So somehow we have deviated from that grounding, so to say, and as, as a result, everything has become limited. Limited in knowledge, limited in happiness, limited in everything. And so the more we integrate ourselves, the greater the, the power that is within us begins to shine and express itself. So that is the reason why everyone, because everyone wants to be their better self. Okay, yes. we're making an effort to that. We try to develop that capacity. But most of our effort is only in the physical world. Yes. The physical body, a little bit of intellectual by education and training and all that. We try to cultivate that. There's not much cultivation and development of that emotional faculty. Really systematically, we discussed about it in the early yes. episodes. And that is one faculty that is so powerful and it determines most of what we do every day, right? From what you eat, what you how you dress, you feel like it, you know. You can't explain and, and, it. And how you behave yeah, with others with people, in relationships. With it's others, actually, yeah. the intellectual part is maybe 25%, even yeah. less. Yeah, You can listen and understand, but when you are making decisions, you sort of, that gets pushed aside almost. The emotions take over and, this, and you know so little about it. Mm. So... To understand and utilize and channelize that energy in a constructive way. In our everyday life, if forget about the spiritual, that itself is a great power of that knowledge. Yes. And then of course you have this, everyone needs to integrate themselves, become calm and connected, you know, within mm-hmm. uh, and rest. The natural ways people do that, is if people go to sleep, the body shuts down. Shuts off all the activities, shuts off all the senses just for you to recharge. See, because yes. it needs to get that integrated. That's at a physical level. At a physical level, at yeah. a mental level also. also yeah. okay. But, and that happens not because you are in control of it. Okay, you just you need to recharge and the body shuts down whether you like it or not. Yeah. But meditation is an integration where you do it cons- you know, consciously. In a controlled way. Controlled way and more intensely. Yeah. The rest that you get through a deep meditation is more powerful than the sleep. Yeah. You know, and okay. so in this stressful world, one needs to relax and disconnect from the outside and find inner balance. The meditation for that person is just a very practical uh, device or technique to regain your balance. You know, keep keep yourself centered in yourself, not get knocked out type mm-hmm. of thing. The other higher goal of uh, that you are asking about realizing God or realizing your higher self, the same techniques can be engineered uh, to for that higher goal. But even if you are not wanting that, even then you should practice karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, the f- just maintaining your balance in the struggle and strife of life. Mm-hmm. So everyone should practice it. Should if they want a full, a better, meaningful, purposeful balanced, harmonious life type of thing. Mm. So these four yogas are there. We have discussed karma yoga, the art of working without any attachment to the results of work eh, because attachment creates problem. Yes. And, <clears throat> and we suffer because we can't detach ourselves from things that trouble us. Can't shake them off like the donkey could shake this. We gave that little story. So how do we develop that method by which we can be the the boat is in the water but the water is not in the boat. <laughs> you go out and do all the activities but you don't carry them back uh, or, uh, and let it disturb your sleep or your rest of the day. Give your whole attention to whatever you're doing and then you should be able to drop it there 100% and move, just move on. That would be wonderful, isn't it? Yes. How do we develop that capacity? Karma Yoga teaches that. Jnana Yoga tells, hey, what we see in this world is only an appearance. What, 
how it is presented to us through the five senses, how it is interpreted by the mind. But they say that it's only a representation of information and our experiences in our mind. Ten people seeing the same thing will have ten different experiences, depending on how the mind is conditioned. But behind this whole names and forms, the movie is a screen, which is untouched by all the drama that is going on. Mm. How do we come face to face and experience that witness, the screen on which this whole movie is being played, but it doesn't get stained by some. shooting <laughs> that we see in the movie it's a white same screen so that is gyana yoga it's there in all the time but in a different dimension uh we talked about meditation the eight steps of meditation how systematically we calm ourselves distract and uh, detach ourselves from the external world and turn that attention inwards and focus it in the center of the core of our being on a spiritual subject and try to resonate with it Uh, resonate our minds with it with the help of mantra, uh, so that we strengthen that connection between the mind and that higher dimension of ourselves. So we have discussed these three, but they are not watertight compartments. Yes. They're all. Uh, they, uh, we also discussed in the last how karma gets enriched with the Vedanta perspective for knowledge that we are doing work, but the people you are dealing with are all spiritual beings. So knowledge comes in there. Excellent. Excellent. That's uh, very good, Swamiji. That's that's a very good recap for our listeners. Um, now, can we go on to the fourth yoga, which is Bhakti Yoga, also known as the path of devotion? Yes. Yeah. In this age and time, interestingly, interestingly, Sri Ram Krishna said this path of bhakti is probably the easiest. Okay. You're supposed to climb to the peak. Yeah, you can go straight up along the st- steep incline, yes. or you can go spherically, you know, round and oh. round and round, yeah. and still reach yeah. the goal. So most while Gyan Yoga and all that were practiced by these Vedic rishis, yeah. but they were not people going around and doing everyday life. They went out into the forest and they. and they spent hours and hours in contemplation meditation and all that sharpened their mind without any distraction then they could develop that faculty to discriminate between the you know separate the the world from the spiritual truth but the ordinary man who is busy with his duties responsibilities from morning to evening at best he is getting some 10 15 minutes time to do some little bit of meditation can you guys all is becomes just an intellectual exercise mm. what can we really practice at the end of the day that is tell me that yeah and also from your emotions yes so the emotions directed to the divine right becomes devotion right okay let's okay okay that's good that's yeah. well put let's yeah, yeah emotions directed to the divine or the higher being yeah higher self higher our self. own our yeah, own self. higher self yeah. is devotion so emotions are there let us explore emotions it's mm. a we say it's a feeling what type of feeling you know kindness compassion love affection uh, all those things and their negative emotions are also yeah. anger hatred jealousy greed you know violence and all those type of comes just these are all powerful emotions and you will see everyone is a bundle of emotion in one way or the other constantly changing from in different situations in different interactions is power vortex of energy type of thing which way is it spinning sometimes it can be even cyclonic self destructive mm. in anger people do so much harm to themselves and to others while another person who is so loving and kind does so much good to themselves to this others so we have to understand it's a form of energy in this world everything in this universe the foundation is pure consciousness brahman and any aspect of manifestation is called shakti brahman and shakti fire and its power to burn mm-hmm. burning power is shakti mm-hmm. agnir dahika shakti the 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 fire will burn something you know otherwise it's not fire yeah okay yeah so brahman is like fire its burning power is shakti. the whole universe whether it's gross what is experienced as matter or ideas and thoughts of mind they are all different levels of levels of energy, energy yeah. okay so it's all about managing energy yeah. basically okay now if you 
have that type of scientific approach let's mm-hmm. understand what is this energy mm-hmm. how does it work uh, how does energy work so if you want to do a little bit of scientifically let us say mm-hmm. understand because we want to build a little bit of theory mm-hmm. not me so in, you know when we study physics we say there are so many forms of energy light is energy heat is energy electricity is energy magnetism is energy you know gravitation is energy mm-hmm. or forces uh, with energy when you represent that you see energy always flows in cycles mm-hmm. and that's represented by waves light wave sound wave and all that any wave representation has two uh, characteristics one it's how fast is it how frequently it is going in the cycles yeah. it's called frequency yeah if the more the more frequent it is the more energy it has got mm-hmm. the energy of a wave is proportional to its frequency so you've got this low energy waves like sound wave then light comes visual spectrum you know this different colors are different frequencies yeah. then you got x rays it can penetrate through the skin but mm-hmm. can't penetrate through the bone mm-hmm. microwave can go even deeper gamma rays can go throughout the earth and come out on the other side unobstructed the higher the energy the more the power of penetration is like your when you say on phone you know 2g 3g 4g yeah. g is representing the frequency of the signal right and see we you know how much <laughs> information is contained when you go from 2g to 5g yes okay the data so understand that yeah. it's all about using energy they are yes. using it for communication purposes yes technology yes so mind is also energy yeah and the mind has got its own different frequency in different people sometimes when you say how oh, the mind has come down yeah i'm feeling a bit low yeah okay that means you feel it's not much energy yeah. like energy energy levels are low eh? yeah the energy levels are low yeah you yeah. express in that level yeah. and sometimes you are all fired up and excited <laughs> and this and that and just vibrant and challenging and have a go and zeal and achieve so much there yeah. energy level is high charged up you say yes. charged up so what is charged up the the mental energy and frequency has gone up yes all right okay. so let's try to have this understanding what is the mind imagine the mind is a form of energy and it's it's some energy is fed to it and energy gets boosted or some energy gets drained out of it it becomes low but within us what is controlling our action thought is this bundle of energy okay and the second thing is so frequency is one and the other one is amplitude yeah how so up and down up and high. down uh, the the distance between peak to peak yeah so if we say what is what did detem- how do we experience amplitude it's like if it's sound then how loud it is okay if it's frequency of sound what's a pitch yeah you know high 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 pitch or low pitch when it's light frequency determines the color right amplitude determines its brightness right okay okay so these are the two features of and we are any, yes, energy always energy everywhere we are in a ocean of energy all mm-hmm. types of energies are constantly bombarding into us yeah. and we have got these devices mm-hmm. like eyes and the ears and nervous tongue skin which is able to take this energy capture them focus them present it to the mind the mind then constructs an image and that's the world we experience but mm-hmm. looking from a very scientific point of view it's all energy yeah constantly coming yes. that energy can be so you are a bundle of energy i am a bundle of energy when two bundles come together then you are interacting yeah. but swami ji you this how this is this seems like a like a physics lecture i'm i'm, I'm thinking there's a connection mm. to bhakti yes. yoga so coming to some say so this is a pre the pre we yes. do to it because need otherwise we will talk okay. about things without explaining once yes. we get the fundamental ideas Okay. understood right then, then we say i am a bundle of energy yeah. and bhakti means so another principle you have to introduce a bundle of energy its own amplitude and frequency everyone is a bundle of energy let us say mm-hmm. everyone is a wave in that ocean all right and so if you have 10 people they are all have got different frequencies vibrating mm-hmm. with different ideas different levels of enthusiasm mm-hmm. when you come together okay this in- interaction now let us say how does that interaction happen when two waves come together in physics they will interfere and yeah. create what is called an interference pattern yeah. they can cancel each other out mm-hmm. destructive interference or they can add to each others 
and have constructive interference right and so they will increase the yeah frequency and am- amplitude uh, you will increase amplitude, amplitude. Okay. okay so like you go into a board meeting yeah okay everyone is on the page you yes. supporting each other yes well everyone goes but you get another guy who throws a spanner in the wall in the box and he's criticizing and now nah, and this and that you see he just neutralizes the enthusiasm or they said sometimes you just cancel the whole thing nothing came out of that nothing came out yeah okay yeah. so see the science of it we are going to use this principle in devotion but we are using it in our everyday life is good to understand that also yes so wherever two people come and they find the frequencies are matching then we are in sync we are on the same page you will gravitate towards each other and you will enjoy that company because this energy begins to flow between you have a very nice conversation and you are agreeing on most things but you are just sharing each other and reinforcing each other and you feel uplifted in that conversation you want to get back to that conversation mm-hmm. birds of a feather flock together what's the mechanics behind this so when energies come or two bundles of energy when the energy transference between one system to the other one person to the other one group to the other is through the principle of resonance do you resonate with it so when two systems two people have the same frequency yeah. they will be in harmony with each other yes and perfect harmony means they have when they're close they will gravitate towards each other the perfect harmony means it's totally synchronized okay totally synchronized with each other and, and that's when the two have become one almost because mm. the difference has become obliterated and they that's what's called coupling and mm. two people a man and a woman when they meet each other like that at some point they want to become a couple because they totally feel in comfort in their ambitions or whatever they want but if for any reason one deviates out of it then you say decouple also is separate also see <laughs> the principle of it yes you see the, how yes. it is there and it's yeah. very powerful if you are the de- same sorry so just uh, interjection uh the same principle could applies to you know when when there's a group of people together and one person is quite energetic uh mm-hmm. you know a lot, lot of vibrancy is bringing to mm-hmm. the group um as soon as a person leaves it sort of drops down yeah. and so he's obviously operating at this level and is lifting the group yes uh, as soon as a person goes it the group goes back down yeah. so how do people lift to that higher energy level is there so we talked about this already but let's yeah. go to you know bring that here and connect it we talked about this principle of color rhythm entrainment yes you know and we gave that example how if you have this five grandfather clocks on the wall yes. that were out of sync and you yes. just randomly uh, swinging and you leave them after some time and you come back they are all swinging together yes so they are communicating mm. and they communicated decided that it's better for all of us to be in harmony than to be jarring and interfering interfering with each other and cancelling yeah. each other all right right but it might take a whole day or something for this to to happen yes but if you bring the sixth clock and put it out of sync this will not take so much time it will be yeah. drawn into it much quicker right. the bigger system will pull it and say become part of us be in tune with us yes so that is called a rhythm entrainment it will entrain you into itself right and you look at it now you go join a company in a group where people are there they have different rhythm yeah. you are an outsider in the beginning a little bit out of sorts mm. but after some time say i am and i have settled in yeah. everything is nice you have been pulled into that yeah. system this could be linked to the uh, co- company's culture yeah whatever it is well. the bigger yeah. system will the pull it off so this okay. is the way we operate this is this how is we how. behave yeah. and this yeah. is how this is what is and expected. you begin then you have settled in everything yeah. is very nice i've made friends and we yes. are doing things together yeah so you see how the if somebody were just observing each one as in mind not as a person mm. and the frequencies suppose we could measure like that mm. then you, you would see the mechanics of it how the 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 energy of the bigger system pulled itself mm. okay so what is other strategy but like when when some people just won't integrate uh, with the bigger system yeah, they so will, they'll fall off they'll fall off they'll yeah. fall off yeah. Uh, because you know how it goes sometimes yeah, oh, because the difference the may be too much it's too much of okay. a so it's too much in, gap yeah too much of a gap to actually pull up yeah yeah so if you are a, a business person conducting an interview and trying to find who is the guy i should yeah. hire 
you, if you just look at his academic qualification and experience that's yeah. one thing he might have all that yeah. but does he fit you might say does it fit in yeah. the culture will he fit or not yes and so you know if if you understood what we hmm. they understood the mechanics then in the interview they will try to suss this out would he would he be a fit hmm. and will he remain there's another thing yeah okay so sometimes you got five people six people or group everyone is working nicely everything was going then one of them feels i need i must move on yeah okay do something different do something different it's getting very monotonous, monotonous. no growth Growing. and development it's sort of yeah. holding me back type yes. of thing so while the bigger system can lift somebody up mm. it can also prevent anyone trying to leave yeah from um, and it'll drag him in yeah because it kept so uh, somebody says hey i'm not uh, you know i want to try something new the boss will say i'll give you an increment i'll give you uh, give you more responsibility all these are different systems by which he's trying to say remain with us mm-hmm. but to understand this from that energy the mind we are dealing with so this is how we interacting with all day mm-hmm. we drive out is a bundle of energy thoughts ideas bubbling in there we go into work work in their uh, office people are there so seniors juniors and all that and what you achieve in that whole day is very important because what you make a contribute how much you contribute and how you have been in rhythm with others and if you are not in rhythm with others then it's a not a very pleasant place to work yes, you know that's right yeah. you stress out you are unhappy you are uh, irritable and get irritated by others so this whole science of it if it's understood by the upper management and people that for us to succeed we have to be the team when you call the team means everyone is on the same on page. the same page yeah. right that's yes. what they keep saying that are we on the same page are, are we, we on the same page are yeah. all our ideas aligned in the same direction yes. this, so then we have intensity otherwise we'll nullify each other type of yeah. one pulling that way it's like a tug of war in two ways <laughs> you don't go anywhere yes. but both of us will pull in the same direction there's tremendous power yes so it's all is very interesting to understand this mind entity in terms of science why do we do that you see mind is only part of nature yes we have studied physical physic the physical world and we've discovered these principles that govern the you know how the external material world operates and the same principles can be applied in the mental level also mm. okay and to have a better understanding of how the mind operates and how to manage it so that being a sort of a foundation about the <laughs> before we go into the into actual the, uh, the uh, path of devotion so that how that principle would be applied for uplifting ourselves okay to highest level the resonance principle yeah okay i have got a mind and i would like to resonate with some other form of energy which is at a higher level which is the high level yeah. and in that process i would be lifted up my yeah. mind would be lifted up to that high level that would be the principle behind what we will say the path of devotion but maybe we should because it's going to take a little bit of time let's yes. do that in, in, in great episode. more detail let this be the introduction to that yes Uh, thank you Swamiji that was good we had a good recap of the four yogas uh, in this episode and uh, uh, just a, a good prelude to what's to come uh, as we set our sights on conquering the path of devotion yes, <laughs> thank you Swamiji yes. it's a very interesting subject thank you thank you for listening being in balance rhythm for more information please visit www.vedanta.nz.in